W-W-W. I'm just say it. Who knows what wholesaling is? See, I'm about to teach y'all something else. So did you know you can sell real estate and make money in real estate without having a real estate license? How many people knew that? How many people didn't know that? Raise your hand high. Did you know? See, here's the other thing I like about real estate. I work with a lot of people who have recently uh, been incarcerated and I've helped them make a lot of money in real estate because in a lot of states you can't be a felon and, do, and have anything associated with making money in real estate. This brother is going to teach you guys how to do that strategy. He's so good, he sold properties to people who've never even seen the property. Somebody asked me how they do that. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to introduce my good friend, my brother. First of all, let me tell you something. In probably about three years, he's done over $5 million in real estate transactions. Let me say that again. Who, first of all, who, who's seen $5 million in their lifetime? Okay, so that's, that's a flex. So let me say this again. In three short years, this brother's done over $5 million in transactions. So I need y'all to give another standing ovation to my good friend, my brother and business partner, Steve Philistine. What up? How's everyone doing today? Um, I want to be honest, I've had a couple of uh, shots. Um, uh, you know, when Will asked me to come up here and speak, it was more of a, I'm like, okay, well, who wants to hear my story? <laughs> but um, fast forward, uh, my name is Steve Philistine. Thank you everyone for coming out. And real estate investing has actually changed my life completely. I mean, I went from having this idea and the notion that you needed a license to do certain things, and I would watch YouTube videos, but watching those videos made me say, okay, I know if they can do it, I can do it. So fast forward, um, I'll tell you guys where I'm from. I'm from Miami, Florida. My mother raised eight kids, five boys, three girls. Mama had one rule, get a job. If you got a job, you stayed out of trouble. So fast forward upon um, getting a job, it was pretty neat, and I said, not a problem, but I knew that I wanted to do more in life. So fast forward, what I did was I ended up getting into ministry. So I went down to Huntsville, Alabama, and decided to pursue a career in uh, getting into ministry to become a pastor. So I was in Huntsville. I became homeless at that time. That's a long story, making some bad decisions. Upon being homeless, I met this guy. He got out of this Mercedes, and he had this really nice big ring. And I'm like, what do you do? He said, I'm an investor. And I said, okay, okay, okay. So then at that point, he recommended me to read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. When I read that book, Robert Kiyosaki talked about this strategy, assignment of contracts and wholesaling. And I'm the kind of person, I get curious real quick. Either one or two things are going to happen. Either this is real or I'm going to jail. <laughs> so then I just kept researching and researching and then I finally uh, decided to come back to Vegas. Uh, my mother had called me and said, well, why don't you come live out here with me? And I said, okay. So I came back here, I slept on a couch, I worked at a warehouse, and upon um, working at a warehouse, my older sister, she was always the one in the family, you know, during Thanksgiving dinner, that makes all the food, calls everybody to come out, and I really appreciated that about her. Then she moved to Ohio, and that really got on my nerve. I don't have a problem with Ohio, by the way, but um, so fast forward, I'm out in Vegas working at a warehouse, and then at that moment, I decided to go to a workshop that was coming out here for investing by Robert Kiyosaki. So I went to that workshop, and I met a lot of people, and at that point, when I was at this workshop, I was there, and I started marketing. When I started marketing, I would spend about $125 a week for direct mail, and that direct mail went out. When it went out, this phone call came in, and this seller said, hey, let's meet up. I have a property, I wanna get rid of it. So this property at that moment, when I went out to look at it, I, I was so broke, I didn't even have a car. They talk about driving for dollars, I was walking for dollars. Man. But one thing about me, you couldn't tell me, no, I was gonna go get it. So at that moment, I went to this property, I walked over there, I met up with the seller, and I looked at the house, and he said, do you want it or not? I said, yeah, I'll take it. So we wrote up a contract, 
And little did I know that one contract right there would change my life. I ended up getting it under contract. I put it up on Craigslist and people started to call me. When they called me, the mysterious thing that happened, everybody was making offers. They claimed that they had cash. I said, ain't nobody got that much money. Come on now. I had this one guy come out. Um, he was from, uh, respectfully, Mexico. He had these big boots on and this nice belt and this big hat. And I looked at him. I'm like, I, I, he got a couple of dollars, but I just don't know how much. So um, they said they wanted the house. I got the house under contract for $10,000. Long story short, I resold it for thirty-five, and I made twenty-five grand. But here's where it gets interesting. After I got that contract, I went to the bank, and keep in mind, I got off the cat bus too. And uh, the people at the bank, were, the one on Maryland Parkway, they saw me get off the bus. So when I went over there to cash the check, the bank teller, she looked at me like, what you want? And I'm like, girl, listen, I got you, you know? <laughs> so uh, I walked up you know, to the booth and handed them the check. And, my account was so negative. You know those $35 negative a draft, those draft fees? It was so negative, she looked at me. She was like, ain't no way I'm cashing this check. <laughs> so she went to the back and got the supervisor. You know they got to get the superior. So she went and got one of them. He came out, he looked at the check. He didn't want to cash it. So he went back there and got the other lady. So they put it on a 10-day hold. 10 days I waited. I finally went back up there. I got the money. I took that money and jumped back on the bus, and I went to my mom's house. I spread that money across the kitchen table, and I waited for mama to come home. And when she came home, she said, baby, what did you do? I said, mama, relax. I ain't did nothing. Mm. So I share that with all of you to let you know that this is real. Wholesaling, you don't need a license, number one. And number two, you just need faith. And number three, find somebody who's already been there. And when you find that person, follow their lead. So what I didn't tell you guys was, that was my first deal. My second deal was, I ended up sending out a direct mail campaign. I paid another $125, and that deal was for $40,000, my second one. My third deal, I sent out another direct mail campaign, but keep in mind I had just came back from Paris too. I was one of those people I had to see the world. Mama said, what you doing? I said, I'm doing me. And I was in Paris with the little selfie stick. And I said, Mama, look, we rich. <laughs> she said, no, babe, you rich. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I came back out here and did another direct mail. But fast forward, you guys, in all seriousness, um, Brother Will means so much to me because he's been someone who's been harping on my spirit for a long time on this journey in investing. And I tell you that because I've done over 900 deals, cash transactions. Now, when I met Brother Will, um, I must admit I was hard-headed. And Brother Will talked to me about, he said, OK, you've mastered one side of real estate. What about the other? And I said, well, OK. And many, many years, he stayed on me. But the one thing I will say, he never gave up on me. So I don't know if all of you in this room know who this brother is personally, but I would encourage all of you to make at least five minutes to talk to him. Just go by, shake his hand. At, at least do that before you walk out of this building today. Say, hey, Brother Will, my name is such and such. Nice to meet you. And tell him what you do. Because his mind works in such a unique way he has all these different strategies and ideas. And as you tell him where you're at in your journey and what you're going through, or the LLC that you have or don't have, his mind starts to work on your business plan. And that's what I like about him. And he's helped me see so many opportunities that I let go of. And I want to say thank you for you saying five million, but it was actually 10 million. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get a clap? Come on, Steve. Can I get a card, brother? <laughs> so I tell you guys this. Um, so real estate, the grandfather of real estate is wholesaling. So when you're wholesaling real estate, what wholesaling means is you're getting a property at a discounted price. 
at a discounted price. For example, if it's worth $300,000, you are going to send out a direct mail campaign and get that property for $150,000 under contract. Now, there are certain people in that area that will purchase that contract off of you. Now, the reason that you don't need a license is because you are what you consider to be an equitable interest holder. So in actuality, we're not buying and selling real estate. We're actually buying and selling paper that controls the real estate. So keep that in mind. I don't know if any of you in this room are stock investors or, you know, you guys understand put options and all that stuff or the option to trade and that's what we're really doing. So I decided to sell out to that model. You could have came up to me and said, hey, let's go do this, let's go do that. If it was not wholesaling real estate, I didn't want to hear it. So the point is you got to lock in. When you know what you want to do, what you want to go after, go after it. And then number two, I set up this thing called KPIs. KPI stand for key performance indicators. You got to know your numbers. Men lie, women lie, but the numbers don't lie. I said to myself, I got to talk to 30 sellers in one day. And I knew if I talked to 30 people in one day, I'd get one deal. And I was the kind of person, I was always broke and so broke to where I know I needed cash like today. So I learned wholesaling. So my first deal, I, resold, I got it for 10, sold it for 35. My next deal after that, I ended up making 40 on that. My next deal after that, my next three, I made 17. The next one after that, I made $60,000. I ended up getting a duplex under contract for $10,000. People said, how is that even possible? What I did was I ended up setting up a marketing campaign, direct mail. I found a seller that had a portfolio of properties. The one specifically that I went after in his portfolio, there was just a lot of water damage in there. He cashed out the insurance claim, took the check, pocketed, and said, give me 10000 you keep the shell. I said, I'll take that all day. So I ended up sending him the contract. We met at the property. He signed the contract. And I turned around and assigned that contract right away. And I made $70,000 at that point. After I made that $70,000, I took thirty, put it in my pocket, jumped on a flight, went back out to Paris. <laughs> Mama called me again. Check that out. She said, what are you doing? I said, mama, didn't you hear me? I'm doing me. So here's where I'm going with all of this. Brother Will, his strategy and mindset, he talks about the buy and hold. I'm being vulnerable with you guys right now in this room. It's one thing to know how to make that kind of money quick, but do you know how to hold on to it? I can show you that all day. You sit with me five minutes, give me your number, I'll tell you how we're going to get it. But once you get it, what are you going to do? That's why I love this brother. He really broke down the mindset of investing. And so after that, I started getting boring on this journey. And so I decided to start up a nonprofit organization to where I veered to the left a little bit. And we started to, um, we wanted to place single mothers, military veterans, and uh, the homeless community into these tiny homes. And so I started that organization. That's really good. That's been a blessing. Then I ended up getting into commercial real estate. And the reason I did that was because commercial real estate, the numbers get really, really big. So I send out a direct mail campaign. I hope y'all taking notes. I'm telling you, direct mail campaign. Well, I can sit down with any one of you. I'm going to keep it so PG-13 simple. I'm going to walk you through it. The campaign's going to go out. We're going to set up a Google Voice number. All the numbers are going to go to that phone number, not your personal, because you got to keep business and personal separated. And so when that number rings, you already know it came from that campaign, because don't nobody got that number but this campaign. And when they're on the other line, like, hey, I want to get rid of this property, make me an offer. I'm going to say, well, slow down. I don't know what you got, and I don't know if I want it. So you go over the numbers, pull up on Zillow really quick, find out what it's worth. I call it the three W's. What is it worth? What do they want? What are the repairs? I can analyze any deal in 60 seconds or less. I don't even have to go to it. So we sent out a campaign, and we ended up getting this commercial property. It was the biggest one of my life at that time. I call it the one that did everything. Oh, yeah. So this commercial property came in. This owner owned this property for many years, and we negotiated him down to $13.85 and I found a buyer for it. 
that offer us literally 1%. At that moment, Brother Will kept coming back to my mind because, again, I was being hard-headed, but he was being patient. I ended up making 138000 on that one deal. So wholesaling is, you know, I'm not a chef. I'm not a firefighter. I'm not the best dressed guy in the world. I'm not, I can't give you relationship advice. The one thing that I do really, really well is wholesale properties. That's my claim to fame. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, there's many different ways. Now, if you're in a situation where you need capital, like right now, today, I would sit down with you and I'd look at you in your eye and say, we're going to wholesale. That's what we're going to do. So then at that point, I need to know what your number is. Once I know your number, we're going to come up with a plan. Once we come up with a plan, we're going to set up what you call an AO. An AO, that's a military terminology. That stands for area of operation. We're not going to be shooting all over the place. We're going to be laser focused. We're going to go after something specifically. After that point, we're going to set up what we call, we're going to go after, a, we're going to set up a dream catcher board. I want to know what your dreams are. Why are you doing what you're doing? Who are you doing it for? Do you just want the money to get your own house? That's OK. As your coach, I'd like to know that. And once I know that, I'm going to remind you. So then when we set that up, we're going to decide a marketing channel. And the marketing channel, that's one of the best things that you can do. You've got cold calling. You've got direct mail. You've got bandit signs. You can do all of that stuff. But if you're on a budget, I highly recommend you do probably driving for dollars, because that's worked for me. But I'm 40 years old. I just turned 40 um, January 17th. I've got a little girl out here, seven-year-old. Her name is Destiny Crystal Philistine. And we, me and her, we just wholesale properties together. She brings her little tablet. I got my little iPad. And she's sitting next to me. And we're just finding deals. And she's like, what can we make on this one, Dad? I said, I don't know. It looks like about 17 to me. She said, I think you're off by three. It's 20. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. I I'll be honest with you guys. I was nervous to get up here earlier. I haven't done something like this in so long. And as you get older, we tend to want to get in the back of the room and not say nothing to nobody. There was a brother over here that walked in. And I remember when he walked in, I was smiling at him. I shook his hand. And I said, how you doing? The brother had this look in his eye like, I'm going to kill you. I don't know you. I'm like, oof, man. And I just kept smiling at him. I was like, Ugh. But, um, but in all seriousness, yeah, the real estate, I'm telling you, it's life changing. So um, I just wanted to tell you all, thank you for listening to me. By the way, I've had two shots, so y'all forgive me. <laughs> just, just two shots, yeah. The brother with the shades in the back, you looking fresh, by the way, my man. Yeah. So everyone, thank you. Um, oh, any questions, by the way? So, uh, yeah, the young lady right here in the pink. That's a very good question. So what I like to do is um, I have a confession to make. <clears throat> Oof. I like money like right now. Yes. People be talking about some 30, 45 days. I'm oof, that ain't going to work. So what I do is I set up the closing for 21 days or less, number one. The catch is you want to set up an inspection period. You want to give yourself enough time to where that earnest money deposit does not go hard and you have an opportunity to find an end user for the property. So to answer your question, the inspection period is going to be roughly about seven days. Within that seven days, what I do is I give my buyers three days to inspect it, leaving me four days on the other side left over. So that, the other four days that are remaining allows me to find a backup buyer because we, know, we all know in life, you know, buyers are liars and sellers are storytellers. Let's just be honest. Anybody that tell me they got money, I'm like, right, I do too. Mm-hmm. So I find like three buyers, backup people, and if that first buyer should back out and fall out of the contract, of the agreement, they forfeit their deposit and I go to my second buyer. And now he has the option. If he backs out, I go to the third buyer. But before we get to the third buyer, I call the seller out of respect and I tell the seller, here's the deal. I need a little bit more time to inspect the property. So what I'm going to do is, out of the courtesy of your time, I'm going to release up for $2,000 of cash, and it's going to go directly to you. 
I'm going to sign a document that you're going to send over to the title company and we're going to release those funds. Now you're probably thinking like, why would you give him money? Well, keep in mind, we've already had two buyers. And both of those buyers put deposits down and they're both non-refundable. So I'm going to keep a percentage of that for myself because baby girl loves to get her nails done. <laughs> and she's seven. You gotta see her. She looks at me and I look at her, I'm like, don't do that. Mm. So that third buyer comes in and I turn around and I have them put down another deposit, giving us time to close. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, you. yes indeed. Got a question over here? Oh, go ahead. Okay, the first one, what is it worth? Second one, what do they want? Third one, what are the repairs? Okay, and then do you mind sharing the name of your nonprofit? Oh, the Destiny Program. Yeah. So we're based out of Las Vegas, and great question. Um, we're based out of here, Las Vegas, and um, we're just a nonprofit. We believe in affordable housing. That's it. It's simple. And my trick is for affordable housing was I ended up getting into commercial real estate wholesaling because you make bigger fees and I would turn around, take a percentage of my fees and allocate it over to my nonprofit. I'm sorry, let's back up. I would make a donation. <laughs> okay, all right. Next question. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Nice hat, by the way, man. You over here looking all fresh. <laughs> let's give him a hand, come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh -huh. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir, what's going on, brother? My name is Aaron. Nice to uh, meet you, Aaron. That's a very good question. Thank you. Um, the res one of the resources that I like to use, and again, keep in mind, I was starting from a position of being broke. So when I hear people say, well, I can't do that. You had money. I don't want to hear it. I didn't have a car. I was on the couch. Nobody would give me a date. I would look. Oh, let me tell you a story before I answer that. Oh, my God. I remember I was going to this one church over on the west side. And this young lady, pretty, I said, man. And she invited me out to go on a date with her. Brother, I was so broke, I, I, I ended up getting to the, the site at the date before she did. So I'm over there, you know, positioned nicely, you know, looking all fresh, you know. So she came up, we went to the bowling alley. And at the end of the date, she was like, well, okay, well, you have a good night. And I didn't have a car. Now, I was staying over at my mom's house. So then she ended up asking me, like, well, where's your car? I said, well, you know, my sister has a car. She said, okay, okay, you want me to take you home? I said, well, you don't have to, but I'll take it. So she ended up taking me home, and, and I texted my sister really quick. I said, keep the door open, whatever you do. You don't lock it. So she dropped me off, and I'm getting out of the car. She was driving a Range Rover, too, at the time. But thank God I got my own Range Rover now. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> so then I got out of the car, and as I was heading to the door, I'm looking at her like, like, pull off, go on, bye, go, go, go. She wouldn't leave, you know. So I get to the door, and you know your heart is racing. I, I'm praying to God my sister left the door open. And then I turn the knob, and it's locked. And I'm like, God, oh. So I looked up. You know I did one of these. Like, I touched, you know, for the keys. I went like this. That little pop. <laughs> I did that. She wasn't buying it. Man, she never called me again, brother. Never called me again. But you know what happened, though? Check how God works out. I was working out at LVAC, and she had seen me. This was literally about a year ago. And she saw me, and we started talking. She said, what do you do now? I said, I'm a real estate investor. She said, is that right? I said, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, um, you know, but God had a way of doing things. But well, I don't want to put her on blast. But to answer your question, though, so starting at a budget, we'll say it like that. If you're on a budget in this room, if you're going to spend your money on anything, I would spend my money on something that's free. You want to go to Google Voice, create a number. Keep it separate from your personal cell phone, number one. Number two, there's a website that's called Fiverr.com. You go on Fiverr.com, that's F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Everything is five bucks on there. Sometimes they want to get a little pricey and try to charge you all these other fees. I don't want to do it. I'm on a budget. So that website, they will help you customize and edit documents. I'm answering your question, five dollars. 
And if you ain't got that, then, then let us pray. Yeah. So now you got a phone number. You have somebody do the contracts for you. Now the direct mail, I like them personally. Go to Walmart. I get envelopes and yellow letters. And you're going to handwrite to that seller. Once you handwrite to that seller, you're going to send that letter to their mailing address of their personal residency. What I tell people is before you send that letter out, you want to make sure that the property that you're sending the letter to is their personal residence. And I don't do any LLCs, number one. I won't send them out to any S corporations. It has to be in a personal seller's name. So when you're looking at the information on public records, if it does not say John Smith or Susan or their personal name, they're not getting a letter from me. That's how you do it. If you want to talk more, brother, let's talk after this. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? I'll take one more question. Go ahead. That's a very good question. So um, door knocking is a very good strategy, and I've done that before. There was this one deal that we found door knocking. Um, this gentleman, older gentleman, 87 years old, he had a house that sat on pretty much over an acre of a lot. And the house that sat on that acre, next door, that vacant land, you could actually subdivide the lots, creating a whole other property. And it was in a neighborhood to where you could sell both properties for a million dollars each. So what you want to do is you want to pick an area, specifically, I would say, an older area, part of the city. I don't know where you're based out of. We can talk about that after. And you want to find something with a lot of equity. And you want to develop this eye, what I call it, the eye of the tiger of finding value. So if you, see, if you have a gift in seeing something that other people don't see, that's a good thing. You just have to find a way to monetize on that. So upon looking at this door knocking, I noticed that this stretch of this house was so big. Next door, there was a piece of land. But I didn't see a wall from the backyard from this house to the land next door. So there's an app called Inquisio.com. You guys might want to look that up. What you can do with that app is while you're standing in front of the house, you can actually type up the address of the property, click a button, and the seller phone number pops right up, boom. So I'm in front of the house and I type the information up. Upon door knocking, I call the guy, he answers the phone, and now we're negotiating. So on that specific property, I ended up making on that deal about 125,000 just by door knocking. But you see, we have this thing, and this is why Brother Will is so effective at what he does. He talks about the mindset. You can have the right idea with a person with the wrong mindset, and I can't help you. If you think I'm lying, then I'm just lying. I can't help you. You got it all figured out. But then you jump in a car with me. We go to the bank, and I pull out 50 racks. You're like, hold up, what, what, what's this? I said, brother, that's called gumbo. <laughs> okay, I see y'all don't know what southern food is. It is cool. I, I'll talk about it later. But um, so yeah, door knocking works. And it's very effective, and you don't have to spend any money at it. The only thing you have to spend money on is Inquisio. That's like 39 bucks. But again, my mindset is, how do we make money without spending any money? That's how I think. Everybody want to save money this, money that, spend here, spend there. I don't want to do that. I had this one brother, Brother Paul, we would rap on the phone about these different strategies. And I ain't going to lie to you, Paul's a little rough with me. But I love it though. Oof. Paul gets straight to the point. He wants to look at the numbers. And when you're around people like that, what you start to realize is when you're on the phone with a seller that's wasting your time, you get straight to the point. 